Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Peace be upon you. Welcome all. Welcome to our 48th session in the Arab English Teachers Association. I am Shawkia Hawawra, the president of this association. I'm from Palestine. Uh, I am so glad uh, to be with you to exchange ideas about an important uh, topic, which is assessment. And this uh, uh, webinar is titled as Creating Assessment Based on Individual Students' Abilities. And I hope it uh, you will get benefit from it uh, and i hope also to exchange ideas experiences between us but before we begin and all, of course i welcome you all from different uh, uh, countries of the world to this session and let's watch this short video which i have prepared uh, using a canva Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yes. So the, uh, the, the ladies of my, uh, you know, circle uh, would have mocked at me, but I did not take care. I did not. Uh, sorry? Uh, because I was from a good uh, state of Sorry, sorry. Is I there am, any problem? Uh, uh, sitting among people who are Yes, educated, please. Who Can are you mute really yourself? Well and if I say Can I'm you doing, mute yourself? Days, they will uh, actually mock at me. So talking? I never uh, disclosed it. Yes. But then it I gave me such a big opportunity. Now. now the turning point came. Yes, sorry. <laughs> yes, sorry, sorry. Yes, so uh, another time, welcome to our uh, new topic uh, with me as the president of the Arab English Association. I will talk uh, in this webinar about an important topic and which is very useful for us as educators and for our uh, students. It is creating assessments based on individual students' abilities and also of uh, mixed abilities learners. As you know, there are many ability, many, many different abilities for our students, and we should, as educators, we should pay attention and care more about these uh, things. Okay, uh, so. Uh, what are the objectives of the webinar? Of course, there are many objectives. Uh, by the end of this webinar, attendees will be able to define assessment first, then recognize what the assessment types are, then mention examples on assessment tools that suit students' different abilities. And finally, we will let you suggest some recommendations in order to achieve these goals. Okay, uh, if you ask uh, who is the trainer, uh, of course, uh uh, it is Shawkia Hawawra from Palestine. I have BA in English Literature and also MA in Teaching Methods. And I'm a ministry teacher trainer, a Microsoft Innovative Expert for the third year, thanks God. And those are some of the my achievements by photos. And those are either uh, locally or global or globally. And those are some other achievements. As I said, and I, I am an MIE expert, a local global keynote, keynote speakers. Uh, I won the second place in the Presidency Creativity and Excellency Award in Palestine 2020. 
and uh, I am a Wakelet member, leader, ambassador, certified teacher, and trainer. And, uh, and also, I'm a Minecraft Pan Senior Board T4 uh, IDYM ambassador. I am one of the founders and the trainers of the Microsoft Palestine teams, Palestinian teams. I'm the winni winning uh, winner of ISA, which is the International School Award. I'm a participant in many groups awards like Variety Award, Cooperation Award, Palestine Teacher. Uh, I'm a keynote speaker in local and global conferences and many other achievements like uh, the founder of We Are the Initiative Towards the Beak, which is a very famous team for uh, training uh, attendees on many uh, apps uh, like Microsoft Office apps and many English strategy strategies as well. I'm the president of the Arab English Translators Association. I am a TO2, a, a TOT trainer from the global Ira, the Academy from Egypt. I'm a digital trainer from Sufara, Turkey. I'm the most influential woman of the globe. I'm a Microsoft Innovative Educator Master Trainer, MIE. I'm a Microsoft Innovative Expert, MIE. I am participating in local and global initiatives and conferences. I am one of the 100 creative and distinguished educators all over the world from the Green Thinkers in India. I'm the coordinator of the worldwide Green Project from Palestine. I am the ambassador of the International Virtual Passport. I'm the Peace and Goodwill Ambassador from India. I am a member in the International Academy, the public moderator in the Arab Translators Association. I am a winner of the Glory Certificate and Distinguished Ambassador in ARTA. I'm a super ambassador and judge for the, globe, the Global Creative Women Award 2021. I am an English online courses trainer. I am a member in the Arab Code Week, a member in the global in global magazines and in global training teams. Thank you for listening to me and I hope that it meets uh, or this meets your interest. Thank you. Now let's begin with the first slide today. Uh, I want you to discuss this thing. What comes to your mind when you read this? Okay. I will make it bigger. Please read it, then try to write any word that comes to your mind when you read this saying. It says everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. What is your opinion? Really, I want you to make interaction between me and you, and I uh, prepare to make interaction using the whiteboard dot fi and the class point. But for uh, not uh, uh, making you late, I will just uh, let you write in the chat box or please unmute yourself and discuss this thing or this saying. What is your opinion? Yes, who wants to comment on this saying? Do you agree with this? If yes, why? If no, why? What's your opinion? Or what comes to your mind when you read this thing? Yes, please. Yes, go ahead, please. The one who is raising her hand is Miss Muna. Yes, please. Yes, Go uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Welcome, Miss Muna. Uh, of course, uh, the fish uh, will not uh, have has the ability to climb the tree. Uh, here we use the differentiated instructions between students, each one on their abilities. Yes. So, Thank so we you. can make assessment uh, according to the ability of the student. Yes, First great. of all, we, uh, we make a diagnostic te test uh, to know the level of the student. 
Yes, in order you mean to uh, put your hands on the weaknesses and the strengths of these students in order to make uh, development materials or plans for them. Thank you very much. Very important uh, uh, at first. Yes, of course. Thank you. Thank you for your nice comment. Let's see another one, please. Yes, please raise your hand and try to talk. Yes, Mr. Uh, Al Hassan says we shouldn't ask someone something which is over his ability. Excellent. Ms. Reem adds, do not underestimate anything or anyone. Anything is possible if well is there. Right. Uh, well makes uh, the uh, impossible things come uh, or comes possible. Thank you. Dr. Dua says there are different abilities, right? Ms. Awatif adds, could you please repeat the question? Yes, of course. Yes. Uh, look here, there is a slide says, or the photo says, uh, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. Do you agree with it? Or uh, what's your opinion of this saying? Yes, can you add any more uh, idea? Yes, Dr. Animrat says one should try and attempt different abilities and different skills, right? Ms. Nawal says we cannot reach the summit without the trying, right? Because the trying is the most important step in order to uh, reach success. And without failure, you cannot reach success, of course. Thank you. Yes, uh, Ms. Hiba says differentiated activities in a classroom, right? Ms. Re uh, Reham uh, said we have individual abilities, right? You mean uh, different abilities according to the level of the students, uh, to their abilities, to their or to what they can do. Uh, Muna says differentiate instructions, right? Dr. Sai uh, Dua says thank you, uh, you too. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Al Hassan. Thank you, Ms. Riham. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, it is amazing. Yes, Ms. Muna, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Animrat. Alaikum salam. Yes, thanks. So let's move to another thing. But before that, Ms. Aya says we are different and every one of us is successful in different aspects. As the multiple intelligence theory say, there are different kinds of intelligences, right? Some uh, one is intelligent, for example, in writing poetry, some uh, one in uh, uh, composing poetry, in reciting Holy Quran, in uh, jumping, in sports, in music, etc. So it, it, it is very important to note that. Miss um, uh, Tanya says everyone can expect at something. It's just finding the right thing. Thank you. Gufran adds everyone has a skill, right? Uh, Amal says everyone is genius in his own abilities and qualifications. Yes, as many others says, don't underestimate others because they are, for example, weak in some aspects. But uh, some uh, or many times, if they are weak in one aspect, they are very genius and smart in others, right? Zuhra uh, says various skills and abilities, uh, right? Yes, you added many nice and fruitful comments. Thank you. Zuhra says capabilities. Awatif says instructions and materials must be accessible for all learners. You mean according to their interest, for example example, according to their abilities. Thank you. Thank you very much. So let's proceed to the other slide. Here, as you know, we uh, are uh, English teachers and we are facing many challenges every day, especially for us as Arab uh, uh, teachers, we are living in Arab countries and our uh, native language is not English, it is Arabic. And many students uh, are facing many challenges, many problems in learning this tough uh, language according to them. Uh, for example, the, the teacher is uh, or ha is having uh, about 25 to 30 students and many times more than this number. In uh, some classes, there are about 40 
to 50 students in each class at a time. And the, those students are different levels of ability, as you said. They are having varying various uh, motivation for working with English and also their own special interests and experiences. And uh, as a teacher, you should meet these mixed abilities classes, ability classes each day in a very keen way. So what is a mixed ability class? You can answer now. What do we mean by a mixed ability class? Can you interact? What is a mixed ability class? Yes, you can either raise your hand or write in the chat box. What is a mixed ability class? This one, OK? Yes, who wants to answer? Yes, please. Miss Hanan, yes, the floor is yours now. What do you mean by mixed ability classes? I think mixed ability classes that we have a class yes, go uh, ahead. in which. Hello? Yes. I think that Miss Shokia, do you hear me? Yes, go ahead, okay. please. Uh, I think mixed ability classes that uh, a class in which we have many kinds of abilities. Uh, we have uh, students, uh, they have um, different abilities uh, and they are not all the same. So uh, I think we yes. uh, today we have uh, the kind. How can we deal with all these uh, kinds of abilities in one class? Great answer. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move to another one. So Miss Hanan says that these classes uh, have uh, different abilities, different levels, different multiple intelligences. So this webinar will deal with this and how can we deal as educators with these uh, classes? Thank you. Let's come to Miss Hawater. Miss Hawater, Good afternoon. Go ahead. Good Thank afternoon. You for this Welcome. Opportunity. Um, Miss Ebony's class uh, is when we have uh, different mindsets and different uh, learning styles of the learners, such as audible, kinesthetic, uh, visual, because the, the, the learners don't um, have the same mindsets don't have the same level of understanding and uh, with different or multiple intelligence uh, each student can understand by his way each students can can learn differently from the other so uh, for this uh, reason we must um, go down to the to the students as their differences we have a diverse Great. class Yes, agreed. So diversity is a, a reality in our yeah. classes and yeah. we should pay attention to this in order to uh, look what they need to uh, yeah. deal with this, as you said, to uh, be like a, or to deal as if you are a student, to put yourself in the student's shoes in order yeah. to uh, see how can you deal with this problem or yeah. that one. To yes, thank you. To their needs, yeah. Thank you. Yes, yes, thank you. Great answer. Thank you. Let's come to Miss Amal. Miss yes. Amal, <clears throat> welcome. Yes. Yeah, welcome, Ms. Shaw. Yeah. I, I like, uh, I think uh, mixed ability classes uh, means uh, classes uh, where students uh, differ greatly in ability, motivation, um, needs, interests, uh, uh, educational background, uh, uh, and the style of learning, and uh, their experience about yes, thank learning. You. Yes, yes, thank you. So thank you very much for this nice comment. So you should care more about this in order to have a successful class in order to upgrade their uh, uh, understanding and competence according to their abilities. Thank you very much. Let's move to another participant. Miss Mona, please. 
Uh, yes, mixed ability in class, it means that uh, we have students in higher achievements and lower achievements, yes, not equal right. in their achievements. Uh, yes. And this uh, not according only to their mental or education, maybe they have problems uh, at uh, home, uh, they do not focus, uh, many reasons. That's why we have mixed ability, not only educational. Yes, of course. Yes, uh, you you mean, uh, for example, they differ in their abilities in the academic side and also in their social side, for example, in their backgrounds, etc. Yes, thank you. Yes. Yes, thank you. So let's move to the next slide. So what is a mixed ability class? As you said, mixed ability classes means classes where students differ, differ greatly. Uh, number one, in ability. Number two, in their motivation uh, for learning English. As uh, one of you said, motivation is very important. Some have a great uh, motivation, either intrinsic or ex extrinsic motivation. Uh, but others don't have uh, this kind of motivation. Also, they differ in their needs. So you should pay attention more about their needs if they need uh, the subject or not, uh, for example. Also, interest, educational background, styles of learning. Uh, many, uh, many or one of you said, uh, according to their learning styles, uh, you know there are, for example, visual learners, uh, uh, for example, physical learners, audible learners, etc. So also anxiety experiences and so on as uh, in, in 1994 said. So this is the definition of the mixed ability a class. OK, thank you for your uh, answers. Uh, also, mixed ability classes means classes. Uh, no, so this is a repetition of it. Uh, now, let's come to another uh, thing. What is important when working with mixed ability classes? You mentioned that we should pay attention, but what are the most important things or procedures that you should uh, uh, follow in order to have a good class? Number one, creating a good atmosphere. What do you mean by creating a good atmosphere. How can we create a good atmosphere? Can you comment in this point? Yes, Miss Awatif. What do you mean yeah, by uh, yes? <laughs> so uh, we uh, students need to have uh, need sorry to have uh, to be secure, to be motivated. Um, this is uh, what I think is a good atmosphere for them because yes. it's. They what are, about, uh, we what are about what about making a funny atmosphere? Is it uh, important for them? Yeah, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. I'm uh, yes. talking about because yes. we are uh, teaching a tech savvy generation, so they are addicted to technology and uh, the use of applications and games in the mobile yes. phone or uh, whatever. So, uh, the lesson must be motivated motivating fun funny uh, they they need to be secured also in the class so of course of course yeah, so, because uh, paying attention for their yeah, well-being is the uh, they need to be involved also because yes, we have shy yes, uh, yes, members right. of in the students and that's it yes yes thank you thank you You're so welcome. you are right in your comment you should pay attention to the funny atmosphere to a uh, secure atmosphere to uh, make uh, the students motivated in order to interact between each other and between you as a, an educator and your students in order to have fun, in order to pass the material uh, in a well way, in order to comprehend what you uh, want or what you mean to make them comprehend. Thank you very much. Let's move to uh, the second point, which is develop the students responsibility for learners or for learning. How can you as an educator develop and improve your students responsibility for learners, especially as Miss Awatif says, they are addicted to technology uh, and there are uh, some or many things that uh, they can use uh, to waste their time. So how can you develop your students responsibility for learning? 
Yes, who wants to comment? Please, I want to interact between me and you because this session means interaction. I want to exchange ideas between me and you because many of you may uh, uh, or uh, maybe uh, more um, uh, or have more information about that topic than me. So we want to exchange ideas, please. Yes, who wants to add? Yes, Ms. Aya says uh, for the uh, the, bus, the last point, making a class safe bless, a place for students and making them feel they are welcome and can express their opinions freely, right? Yes, you should motivate them, encourage them in order to express their uh, point of points of view. Yes, may I? Yes, please, Ms. Awatif, go ahead, but please, I need more participants. Yes, Ms. Awatif. Thank you. Uh, can you uh, go back to the, yeah. So yes. uh, developing the students' responsibility for learning. Yeah, uh, I think we can engage the students in group work, in project work with his colleagues uh, in order to, to give him leadership in the group or um, something that will be responsible for a task, uh, yes. a project work, a role play, uh, a quiz, something that make him makes him uh, engaged and involved in the in the instruction. Yeah, right. So you mean that cooperation and interaction between each other is very important. And as you know, they are very uh, vital uh, skills from the 21st skills. And we should, as uh, digital uh, educators and also our students are digital learners, so we should uh, urge them to be responsible for learning, not to depend only on their teachers. No, as you said, Ms. Awatif, to make them, for example, make a role play, uh, to make a project, to uh, research uh, or to search about the information themselves, not to uh, uh, spoon feeding always, because our students in the traditional way uh, were spoon feeding, but nowadays because they are addicted to technology and they are uh, wasting, uh, they are wasting their time some uh, sometimes wastely or use. Listly, uh, okay. So we should develop this thing in our student. Thank you very much. Let's come to uh, the last point, which is giving clear instructions. Do you agree that giving clear instructions is very important uh, when you work with a mixed ability classes? If yes, what is the importance of giving these clear instructions to your pupils? Yes. Who wants to comment? Miss Amal, please. Miss Amal. Yes. Miss Amal, the floor is yours. You are raising your hand. Yes. Uh, Mr. Khalid Ibrahim says we have to make learning student centered, right? Uh, great, because the student is the center of the educational process. Thank you. Yes, Dr. Animrat says yes, but uh, can you uh, speak? Because I can't uh, see all the written things in the chat box, but you can unmute yourself and comment. I like your voices. Yes, Ms. Awatif, but wait a minute, please. Thank you for being active in this session, but let's uh, give them the, the chance to comment by their voice. Uh, Muna, uh, passive, not active. What do you mean passive, but not active? You, you mean uh, they are, they may be passive learners? Muna? Yes, 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 passive yes. learners. You know, not only written as elected, Sure. Yes, yes, so they you should be passive. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, Tanya says it makes the students understand clearly what is expected of them. He am adds create a relaxed, non threatening atmosphere that helps in increasing the pupils' interest, motivation to learn the target language, right? You give very uh, nice comments in the chat box. 
Yes, let's listen to Mr. Khaled Ibrahim from Sudan. Please help yourself. Uh, thank you very much for your enjoyable and interesting session. Uh, thank you. Um, unfortunately, I just joined Yani. Uh, what is what I, what I want to say about uh, uh, giving clear instructions for the student? Uh, this will help the student to know what exactly the teacher wants him to do. Great. And he will focus on the target language. Right, so it is very vital to give these clear instructions in order to engage them more in the educational process, because if you leave them without giving them these instructions, they will, uh, for example, uh, go astray, they will uh, do the exercise in a wrong way, for example, etc. Thank you. Thank you. Let's uh, come to Miss Hiba. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, hello. hello, Ms. Alkaya. Thank you so much for hello. your uh, like fruitful sessions. Uh, I'd just you. like to say that uh, giving clear instructions is really important because this will, uh, this will minimize uh, TTT or teacher talking time and maximize students talking time. Because if, if the students will not understand the instructions, they will keep asking the teacher, what do you mean? Shall I do this or that? That's why the teacher should use what we call ICQs or instruction checking questions. So after yes. giving the instruction, the teacher should ask some short questions like, are you going to work in pairs or in groups, for example? Are you going yes. to um, draw or listen or whatever? So this, after giving the instructions, clear instructions, the teacher should use uh, ICQs or instruction checking questions to make sure that the students understand yes. and got uh, the, the instructions. Thank yes, you. so you mean it is important to check their understanding of this in the instruction by saying, by, by asking them, uh, what are we going to do? Yes, Muhammad. Uh, yes, Ahmed. Yes, Fatima. Yes, in order to uh, be uh, or to be sure that they understood what he means uh, them to do. OK, thank yes, you. Yes, but very we much. don't. Yes, Mr. Mr. OK, but we don't ask them what are we going to do? We ask them some short question, the ICQs. Like, are you going to yes. work in pairs? Because if you ask them, what are you going to do? Again, the students are going to talk and maybe some of them will be confused. You got me? So what I'm yes, saying, ICQs, like short questions to make sure that yes. they got the instructions. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's move to another thing, which is differentiation. What do you mean by differentiation? You mention it. Maybe you read about it, but what is meant by differentiation? Yes, who wants to answer? Yes, Mr. Khalid Ibrahim says giving clear instructions to students can ensure that they fully comprehend what uh, they need to do in uh, to achieve a new classroom. It will ease students' nerves, uh, assuage uh, their ins insecurities, and help them confirm your expectations so that they can be happy uh, uh, and successful in, at school. Yes, thank you. Yes, uh, Mona Al Farouk Al Fardia. Thank you. She wrote it in Arabic. Thank you, Miss Muna. Dr. Mutia says good instructions means good, correct, and specific answers. You are right. Gufran uh, says albidagogi al fariqiya. She means about differentiation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's yes see if someone else. Yes, Miss Muna, you can add. Yes, uh, when we say differentiation in, in class, when we make a test for the student, they have different uh, one, not all the same uh, tests. It's uh, uh, up to their abilities. Uh, yes. Put it in group, in group uh, lower achievement with a higher one. Uh, yes. And each one has uh, the different, uh, different questions. Maybe in the same topic, of course, but the questions may be more uh, clear different. and uh, direct. 
Yes, but what yeah. what is the importance of putting uh, them in different groups? You may, you said yeah. that we should uh, low achievers were, uh, for example, the higher achievers. What is the importance <laughs> of doing that? <laughs> Yes, uh, of <laughs> course you are right. Yes, in order not to depend on each other. If you put, for example, the low achievers in the same group and the higher achievers in uh, another group, so what is the benefit of doing that? But if you uh, make different uh, levels in the same group, it means that they will cooperate and interact between each other, especially for the shy students and the weak or the low achievers one, ones, they can uh, get benefit from these students or this group and uh, have self-confidence in answering the teacher's questions. Thank you for your answer. So differentiation, as you said, is adapting learning in response to our learners' differing, uh, dif differing abilities and preferences. You said this many times, but how? By adapting the learning content or task to meet the same objective, but in different ways. As uh, uh, Miss uh, Muna says, you should, for example, put them uh, in different groups for the same task. For example, if you explain the vocabulary, uh, then, for example, one uh, group, uh, ask one group to uh, use uh, a word in a sentence, another one to draw this word, another group, uh, for example, to mime it, another one to, uh, for example, to say it's part of a speech, it's antonym, etc. So many uh, ways you can, for example, uh, adapt these tasks. Or another uh, point is adapting the process of teaching uh, and differentiating the learning outcome in order to have a good outcome at the end. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned this also. You uh, said about types of learners. If I ask you what kind of learners that you can know, let's move another time, please, to the whiteboard and write what kind of learners do you know. I will send the, uh, the link another time, please. Yes. Here in the chat box, I will send it. Wait a minute. Please just click on the link that I sent in the chat box. It is whiteboard.fi and write your answer. What are the kinds of learners that you know? Just one word, one word. What are the kinds of learners that you know? Please just click on the link, then write your answer. I will write this question. What are the types of please write your answer? What are the types of answer? Yeah, fun, the types of learners. Yes, let's see who is the most active one. This is Aprar. Nice. She wrote visual learner. Thank you. Let's see another answer. You, you see, I see each student or each participant here in my whiteboard. It is a kind of making interaction between you and your learners. It is called whiteboard.fi. It is very easy. No registration. You don't need registration for it. Yes. Let's see another answer. Yes, please go ahead. What are the types of learners? Types of learners.
Yes. Dr. Motia says audio bell. Yes, or audio. Nice. Auditory. Emotional. Yes. Emotional. Uh, Miss Iman. What if you, you don't write anything? Yes, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, Miss Shawkia, uh, because the link I got uh, is not the same as yours without this question. It is the previous one. No, no problem. No problem. You can now take it. Another time I will send it. When, where's yes. my phone? Where's my phone? Yes. Link doesn't show me why. No. Many yeah. wrote here. Many wrote. Yes, you same. can write. <laughs> I couldn't get the new one. <laughs> I, I sent it in the chat box. Yeah, I, I re-click on it, but it is the same, the previous one. Introduce yourself and your country. I don't know what is the problem, no, but no, it's OK. Now, type. So another time I will send it. Let's see now. Let's see, maybe from the Internet connection. Yes, many wrote here uh, audio and kinesthetic. Yes, thank you. Uh, Dr. Mutia adds emotional. Miss Iman says uh, abroad. No, yes, abroad says visual. So let's see. Let's see for the sake of time. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see the kinds or the types of learners. As you see here on the slide, uh, some kind is bored student or bored uh, learner uh, makes a lot of mistakes. Uh, for example, good at the grammar. Some students are good at the grammar. Uh, some uh, gives up easily. Uh, they become bored means they are or some are hard workers, uh, disruptive, confident, lazy, weak in writing skills, good in speaking skills. Some are shy, some are fast workers and many other kinds, uh, uh, kinds as you mentioned previously. Thank you. Now let's come to our topic, which is about assessment. What is assessment? What can you uh, mention or what are the words that come to your mind when you hear the word assessment? You can now discuss by uh, either writing in the chat box or by your voice. Yes. What is assessment? Miss Muna, help yourself, please. Assessment to evaluate the students. We have three types of assessment, formative assessment, summative assessment and diagnostic assessment. Yes, One uh, right. diagnostic at the beginning of the year to uh, to see what the, the level of the student will formative during the yani min elo style awwal will summative who will big one at at the end yes we will see if you are right or not uh, during the uh, presentation inshallah so you said that there are many kinds of assessment tools uh, assessment kinds sorry as formative summative and diagnostic and each one is at a very important period of teaching thank you very much let's see other answers uh, Halima says evaluation. Uh, Mr. Khalid adds assessment for learning and of learning and as learning. Yes, you are right. It is a very important point and we will discuss it in uh, much detail or uh, much de detail uh, or many details. Sorry, uh, Suzanne says making judgment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any other? Yes, Miss Awatif. Do you want Thank to you. add? Yes. Yeah. Uh, assessment is to to measure, to evaluate uh, learning process, the outcomes of the uh, or about uh, skill acquisitions, um, uh, academic readiness for the for tests for it means the intake. We will assess what the students had taken from the lessons. Yes. Yes, to measure to measure their understanding, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's come to Miss Hanan, please. The floor is yours now, Miss Hanan. 
Yes, yes, I think uh, assessment. Yes, I think assessment uh, means uh, to know the levels of uh, our students, to know uh, how much they got from our goals, or to know the outcomes of uh, of my goal as a teacher or my aim. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, you mean that uh, it is the way that we check our students' uh, competence and understand and understanding by using this thing. OK, yes. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, if you have a look here on this uh, uh, diagram or the uh, words here, all these are connected with the word assessment. Can you mention some of them? Can you take one of them and comment on it? Any word? Yes, choose any word and comment. Yes, who wants to begin? Yes, Miss Hanan. Just choose any word from these that you can see in, in front of you on this slide and comment on it. Yes. For uh, example, uh, uh, certification. Certifications. What comes to your mind when you read this thing? And does it have a connection with assessment? Yes, I think that uh, when uh, when I know that my students got uh, my idea, yes, I must uh, give them certifications uh, to know or uh, uh, to inspire them to uh, to do more. Excellent. And also maybe uh, to give them certification as uh, a reward or a prize yes. for their uh, good level in learning or acquiring knowledge after uh, all. OK, yes, thank, thank you. you. Yes, let's come to another. Uh, yes, Miss Marwa, please. Miss Marwa. Uh, peace be upon you. Peace be upon you too. Uh, I read the word the judgment. Judgment. What comes to your mind when you read, read it? Uh, I think that the assessment is giving a judgment for our students' uh, progress in the learning process and to what extent they uh, got uh, weak points or uh, strength points and how to, uh, uh, how to uh, overcome the weak points. Excellent, thank you. So you can judge your students' levels by uh, this thing. Thank you very much. Let's come to uh, Miss Awatif. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, we talk about criteria. Yes. What do you mean by criteria? Uh, of course, when we assess uh, students, we must have a set of criteria. I would talk a little bit about writing. For example, if I'm assessing my students in writing, I must have grids of criteria, for example, adherence to the task, the content, adequacy, lexical appropriacy, grammar, mechanical accuracy, punctuation, spelling, capitalization, etc. So uh, for each task, we must have a set of criteria to 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 allocate the points or the grades for the students, depending on what they have in these criteria. Yes, you mean the rubrics. You mean the rubric uh, for each task, for example, in order. And of course, you should uh, tell your students before uh, judging, before assessing them in order to uh, shed light on the points that you should concentrate uh, on it. As you said in writing, for example, how many uh, points will you put, uh, for example, on ideas, on spelling, yeah. on grammar, on uh, yeah. connectors, etc. So you yeah. should uh, pay attention to this thing and uh, each time you should concentrate on one side, for example, not all aspects on one task in order to encourage the students, because if you concentrate on all the elements in one time, for example, maybe uh, our students will uh, be depressed, upset, and for example, they won't uh, learn anymore. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you very you. much. If you want, if you want to uh, comment on each word, we will uh, have more time, but for the sake of time, we will proceed. So here, uh, as you said, what is assessment? Assessment is recognized as a powerful influence, so it has great influence and uh, effect 
on learning in general as Rust uh, O'Donovan and the Bryce in 2005 said, and on students' use of technologies in higher education as Kirkwood and Bryce in 2008 also defines it. Uh, it another definition says it is ongoing a process systematic collection of information you said about, uh, for example, the formative, the summative, etc. So it is ongoing a process systematic collection of information in order to shed light on certain points. Uh, another thing, it is a process by which information is obtained related to predetermined, predetermined objectives or goals and many other definitions as well. Thank you. Now, uh, there is a great saying uh, says if you want to change the student learning, then change the methods of assessment. Do you agree with this saying? It is said by uh, Brown, Paul and Ben Levery in 1997. Do you agree with this saying? It says if you want to change the student learning, then change the method of assessment. Uh, to what extent is this uh, true? Do you agree with it? Please, who wants to comment? Yes, Muna says, I agree. Uh, Tanya says, yes, completely. Dr. Nimrat says, yes, agree. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Al Hassan says, agree. Thank you. Yes, why do you agree? What is your opinion? Why do you agree? What does this mean? What does this mean? Is it necessary to uh, change our tools of assessment, for example? or our ways of uh, assessment. Why is it important? Why? You said, all of you said that you agree with this, but why? Uh, we, we mentioned before, uh, we do the differentiation. Yes, yeah. to, uh, to suit your students' level levels, methods, abilities, preferences, etc. Yes? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. So why assessment? Why do we use assessment? Always our supervisors, headmistresses, headmasters says you should assess your students in order to do what? For example, the first uh, objective is for enhancing student engagement and motivation towards learning, because if we don't assist them, they will not be motivated and engaged in the educational process. But when we make assessment, they will be more engaged and motivated. Number two, providing opportunities for teachers, parents and, and administrators to gather evidence about student achievement. Of course, our, uh, for example, uh, uh, we as parents, uh, of course, uh, need uh, many times to know our uh, children uh, levels in, in at school in order to uh, put our hands on their weaknesses and the strength in order to pay attention more for their uh, level of learning and understanding. Yes. Also, enabling students to demonstrate what they know, comprehend, apply, analyze, and evaluate. You, uh, you know that our students, uh, uh, or there are many high achievers in our students, so many times they want to show us uh, with the uh, extent or to what extent they know uh, about this topic or that topic. Uh, how can they apply it? For example, when you explain, for example, about the present symbol, uh, let's take uh, this an example. We, you teach them about the present symbol. How can they apply it? For example, they can maybe make a role play using uh, the uh, symbol present or they uh, can describe a process, for example, how to make coffee, how to make uh, makluba, how to make uh, a delicious dish uh, using this kind of tense, for example. So they, uh, this kind of assessment enable our students to uh, demonstrate what they know or what they comprehend. I have a question, uh, um, yes. please. Uh, yes. Validity, Absolutely. validity. Assessment on top of the tenure providing opportunities for teacher, parents, and administrators to gather a whole validity. We call validity or reality. 
بالاسسمنتس قبل شوي بقى. نعم بالاسسمنتس وقت اللي حطيتي قبل شوي الدايجرام اللي بقلبها الفاليديتي والسيرتيفيكيشن ثاني نعم. وقت بتنطبق عليها Yes, what's your opinion? Who can answer here? Yes, do you understand her question? The validity of certification and the words that we put in this diagram here. This diagram, let's return to it. Not is it applicable to this? Yes. Uh, is it here, assessment, and uh, no, he applicable to the second one, what you mentioned in the second slide? Yes. This point, you mean providing opportunities? Yes, why not? Why not? Why not? For example, here, uh, uh, when you provide, uh, uh, when you make assessment to provide opportunities for us as teachers or parents to gather evidence. For example, uh, if we come to certification, for example, or to criteria, when you put the criteria or the rubric for uh, writing, as um, uh, our colleague said uh, here, it gives us a clear um, uh, picture about our students' uh, achievements and development in this uh, process. Why not? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the, your question. Now let's come to uh, types of assessment. You mentioned them. As you see, uh, they are interact, uh, uh, interrelated with each other. Here, there are many types of assessment, but the most uh, important two types are formative and summative. And you also mentioned the, the diagnostic, which is at the beginning of the semester, for example. We make it in order to put uh, or to shed lights, uh, light on uh, our students' achievement, our, uh, their uh, levels, their, uh, for example, um, uh, level of understanding and competence. But what is the difference here between formative <coughs> and summative? Many times we hear these two expressions. What is the difference between these two expressions? Summative and formative. <coughs> yes, please, you can unmute yourself. Yes. Uh, yes, there is Al Hassan. Yes, you can go ahead, please. Yes, uh, the first one, uh, the formative, we use uh, it uh, when we build the, the, the lesson, uh, and uh, it's uh, different steps. Yes. Uh, the, the summative, we use it uh, at the end of the, of the lesson, when we finish. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Al Hassan, for your nice comment. So, formative is uh, maybe at the beginning uh, at the or during the lesson, while summative is at the end. We will see. Yes, another one. Muna, please, Ms. Muna. Uh, my colleague mentioned it. He, he was true. I yes, agree thank with you. Him. So, you agree with him, and we will see in the following. Uh, uh, ones. What is the difference between the formative and summative assessment? As you mentioned, then we will see here the formative uh, and the summative. Here, when and the purpose. If we come to when, for example, when do we make formative assessment, as you said before, or during instruction, while uh, summative is at the end of in the instruction or in order to check their final understanding. The purpose of the first kind is to guide the teacher in a planning and improve instruction. Uh, and also to help students improve their understanding. While the purpose of the second type, which is summative, is to let student, uh, teachers and students know the level of uh, their accomplishment, their competence, their, their achievement. So this is the first uh, uh, kind of difference. Also here, there is another diagram. We said that there is uh, many differences between the two kinds. 
kinds of assessment, which is formative and summative. In Arabic, we said uh, formative at takwini and uh, uh, summative in Arabic also is at tahsili. What is the difference here? As you said here during the first one during instruction at the end here then not graded without grades without points here it has the grades uh, the first one is a process while the second which is summative is a product and also the formative is descriptive feedback while the summative is evaluation feedback and also as you mentioned the formative is a continuous process but it uh, here uh, which is summative is periodic thank you so you are right in your answers now let's come to a new thing here uh, mr khaled mentions something important about types of assessment the formative and summative uh, he said that there are three kinds of assessment the assessment for learning assessment of learning and assessment as learning and as you see it here the assessment for learning is during instruction uh, while yeah you are doing the uh, task and it is called the assessment for learning but the assessment of learning is after the instruction at the end of the instruction then assessment as learning students become aware of their own learning which is self assessment so this is the difference between the three kinds in very simple uh, words okay but what are the benefits of assessment for learning the first kind here there are many kinds of or many uh, benefits of this kind of assessment which is assessment for learning the first one is recognized as educational ad achievement as you see here it is very important to uh, measure our students uh, educational achievement so this is one benefit it. Another benefit is it develops the capacity of self and peer assessment. You know, we should encourage uh, our student to make peer assessment, which is um, sometimes called reflection on their studying in their understanding, for example. And also it is a part of effective planning for us as teachers. It focuses on how students learn in order to see if the, the, the our procedures, uh, our plan is successful with them or not it is central to classroom practice we should uh, encourage our students practice inside the classroom in order to assess them uh, uh, properly also it is a key professional skill it is sensitive and constructive so you should pay attention to it. It fosters motivation. As we said uh, many times, our students lack uh, motivation. So our role as a teacher, uh, as teachers, uh, is to motivate this kind of motivation, either intrinsic or uh, extrinsic. But sometimes we uh, are successful, sometimes we fail, but we shouldn't lose hope uh, every time. Also, it promotes understanding of goals and criteria. And the other one, it helps the students know how to improve. You, yani, they know their uh, weaknesses, their strengths, and how they deal with them, how to uh, improve and develop themselves. So the, these are some important notes about assessment or benefits of assessment for learning. Now, let's come another time uh, to assessment for learning in details. Assessment for learning provide a clear glimpse of student learning and understanding, so we should concentrate on this. Also, when uh, or to adjust everything from classroom management to lesson plans, what do you mean? What do you uh, or what do you comment on this uh, point? When ought to adjust everything? Is it important to adjust everything from, from classroom and management to lesson plans and why? What is the benefit of doing that? What is the benefit of doing this point? Who wants to comment this one? Yes, you can read it. Then comment, please. Do you agree with this? What is its benefit? Mm. 
ما بيكون في اي منى ما بيكون في لكن بنشتغل على الكلاس روم مانجمنت فروم ذا بيجينينج اوف ذا يير ما بيكون في ديسربتيف بيهيفير بالصف يعني كله بيكون ماشي على الانستراكشنز وهذا الشيء انه دونت ويستينج تايم ديورينج ذا ليسن حتى يكون الليسن بلان ماشي صح ما بيصير في ويستينج تايم يس ما بعرف سو يو شود يو شود بلان يور كلاس روم ويل يو مين يس حتى يكون الليسن بلان الانستراكتور او الادوكيتر ما يعني Yes, but, but you bought this uh, lesson plan, but it doesn't suit that you discover that it doesn't suit this class. Uh, maybe it suits one class, but it doesn't suit the other class. What will you do? Difficult no, question. I, I'm not a really? teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, anyone uh, wants to comment on my question? If I bought uh, a plan, I, I, as teachers, always we bought plans to suit our uh, students' levels, abilities, preferences, the intelligences, etc. But maybe I, uh, I teach uh, the 10th grade and it has many uh, uh, sections, A, B, C, for example. Uh, my plan suits uh, section A, but it doesn't, for example, uh, suit section B and C. What will I do? What should I do? Yes. yes? Plan A, yes. plan B, plan C. Yes, right. So it is not a difficult question. Let's listen to <laughs> Miss uh, Leila Tayek from Morocco. Welcome, Miss Leila. Welcome. Hello. How are you? Uh, Hello. Welcome. Can... We miss you. Uh, no, I almost uh, took the presentation uh, almost from the beginning. Thank uh, you. Okay. So I like that question, that reflection on the uh, that, uh, by the way, the screenshot is, uh, is soft, Mrs. Shalkia. Can you share again? Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yes, I agree with the, the statement that yes, of course, uh, the, uh, the assessments should uh, adjust to the classroom management. Because I know that, for example, we as educators and teachers, we don't all the time adapt one classroom setting in the classroom. Of course, sometimes it's according to the activities. Maybe we will agree with me. Uh, according to activity I do, maybe sometimes I will opt for uh, uh, for grouping or sometimes, as you say, Mrs. Shawqiya, for peer work. OK, so uh, the, 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 the assessment should, OK, uh, we should address uh, the, the students uh, or the assessment or the assessment learning according to how I seated, how I, how I managed our my class, how are my students are seated. For example, I can give them an assessment of learning according in a group. Yes, it is possible. Do you agree with me, Mrs. Shalqiya? I yes, can assist course. them. Yes, when yes. they are as a group, it's better according yes. to their different uh, uh, abilities, abilities and intelligent as yes, intelligences and mixed abilities. It's good. Yes, it's course. better. Uh, I think yes. that this is what uh, assessment uh, for learning uh, is done for. Yeah. Yes, of course. Uh, we, yeah. uh, we, uh, this uh, may uh, make us return to the first or to one uh, slide, which is the, which was at the beginning when we said that everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will yeah. live its whole yeah. life uh, believing that it's it is a student, stupid. stupid. Yeah. Because if we yeah. assist all the students in the same way, if we deal with them in the same plan, in the same classroom management procedure it means that uh, maybe we make our students feel they are stupid they uh, cannot be successful for example so you can you, you should be keen a keen teacher a keen educator in how yeah. to deal successfully Inclusive. and properly with your students and many related things to your classes thank you miss Leila thank you for your nice comment let's return and comment uh, continue uh, Another point for assessment for learning, it should be always ongoing and actionable, as we said, uh, during the uh, giving instruction in order to check if they uh, uh, understood Ms. or not. Shawqiya? Yes. Uh, this is uh, yes. I will not talk about this point exactly, but I have a comment on what you have said. Uh, yes. Just a comment. Uh, 
Yes, um, I think when we differentiate with our students, our lesson plans or our techniques, OK, we can change techniques and we can um, ver verify, vary, sorry, the the uh, strategies and the but we can change plans, plan A, B, C and but I think we can't change the objectives. We can have many plans, but not the objectives. Yes. Of we must course. have the same objectives, we, we but with different. Uh, we sorry, don't yeah. Mention, <laughs> we don't mention the uh, objectives. We uh, concentrated on classroom yeah, I know. management and Just lesson plans. An ad. Yes, thank you. Thank you for You're nice welcome. comment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, so let's move to another uh, slide. It is about assessment of learning, and we said that it is a kind of assessment and it is very vital and important to help identify if students are meeting grade level standards or not. They are usually grade based and can include, as you know, the, the, the first uh, and the most uh, well known tool is exams and then portfolios, final projects, standardized tests and many others. So those are some of the assessment uh, uh, tools for or of learning. Uh, if we come to the third kind, which is assessment as learning, uh, it teaches the critical thinking skills, which is the metacognitive skill. As you know, we should urge our students to think critically uh, in order to have a critical uh, leader, a, criti a critical student, for example. Or the, uh, also, we should also teach uh, problem solving uh, in order to put them in a problem and how can or what are the solutions for this problem in order to cooperate, to search, uh, for example, to be aware for their education. And also we should encourage students to get achievable goals for themselves in order to see themselves as successful ones in their society, in their class, in their school, for example. Uh, also, uh, it involves students in the learning process. As we said previously, students are the center of our educational process, so we should uh, be more careful about this point. Also, assessment as learning can help engage students in the learning process more and more. Now, uh, uh, when we talk about uh, many initiatives, many strategies, uh, we have also many challenges. But what are the challenges of teaching multi abilities classes? As you said, there are many different abilities in uh, our classes. Uh, what are the challenges that may face you? These are some of them, and I can hear from you for more the, uh, of these challenges. Uh, for example, example, different levels, activities and resources, personal attention. Here, uh, different levels, we said uh, more about it. Activities and resources, it means that we should, uh, for example, um, uh, differentiate between the resources for each student. Uh, for example, for the low achievers, you can give them simple resources, for example, uh, and activities for the higher ones, uh, more uh, complicated uh, or uh, um, um, advanced ones in order to see their levels. Also for personal att attention, what are some of the challenges you can mention more than these? Who can add? Who can add? Yes, Miss Muna. I raised my hand uh, to add something about the Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's is very yes. important in our education. Right, uh, right. If, the, if the teacher follows the Bloom's taxonomy, they will uh, uh, achieve all the objectives and goals. Of course, because, uh, for example, uh, the knowledge is the bottom and analysis uh, and application at the top. Uh, yes. Sorry. Do you want to add nothing, anything? Nothing. I say y yes. No, Thank no, you. No. Yes, uh, at the beginning, for example, of each class, we should uh, 
uh, um, uh, recall their prayer knowledge about the same topic in order to build on it, for example, or to use uh, the flipped classroom. About the Bloom's taxonomy, it's very important and I really? like it and teach. Yes, of course, of course, because we should depend on it and to be uh, or to follow its procedures in order to have a uh, good uh, attention, uh, good understanding for our students. Thank you. Who wants to add any more? Yes, if there is any one person here. Yes, Khaled. Yes, uh, Mr. Khaled. Uh, here sent the Bloom's taxonomy. Yes, Dr. Mutia says uh, time management, of course. Uh, she means uh, uh, maybe uh, some activities may uh, time consuming and sometimes it makes mess, for example. So those are some of the challenges. Yes, uh, Khalid Ibrahim says formerly known as summative assessment, assessment of learning helps to summarize what pupils know, understand or can do against um, the, the relevant year level achievement standard for different learning areas or subjects in order to report on achievement and progress. Thank you. Uh, Muna says also Bloom's taxonomy. Dr. Mutia says the first step in diagnosing students' language skills to help the teacher's plan, yani to put a suitable plan for her or his teachers. Thank you. How much is left? N uh, not much, not much time, of course, inshallah. Let's move. Let's move to another one. So uh, another uh, or other challenges of teaching multi uh, abilities classes is uh, unpreparedness of teachers to teach multi. It means some teachers are not are not ready to teach such multiple level uh, classroom, and this can be a catastrophe for our students. Also, uh, insufficient educational material to support learning. Sometimes we. Uh, we cannot have the sufficient resources, for example, to teach such uh, topics. Teachers negative attitude to multi-level classes. Some teachers have a negative attitude. It means that they always said it doesn't work. It does. It is uh, negative. It is not. It will not be successful, etc. Some activities may cause a noisy atmosphere, as we said. It make mess, for example. So it can be difficult to keep students' attention. Okay, those are some important challenges. Also poor motivation either uh, for students or for uh, teachers. A mixed ability class may seem uncooperative. Uh, therefore, learners can get bored. It means It means they cannot cooperate with each other. So students will be uh, bored easily. And this may be also make mess, disturbance, uh, uh, etc. The teacher sometimes feels inadequate and unable to cope with the class as planning the lesson and making work material can take too much time as we as we said it it is time consuming uh, if i ask you this question are exams the only tools for assessment i showed that exams is a tool for assessment as uh, learning okay but is is or are exams the only tools for assessment? What is your opinion? No, yes. Halima says no. Please write yes or no. Yes or no. Miss Layla, yes, help yourself. The floor is yours. You can comment on this point. Yes, Miss Layla Taik. Miss Layla. Uh, yeah, and, uh, of course, I can say that it's not just uh, okay, the assessment or a test or a quiz is uh, the only way to assess uh, students. Now uh, we can assess the students just by a game or by uh, engaging them into uh, conversations. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, in my opinion, uh, the assessment is according to the skill uh, yes. that uh, we, we focus on. For example, I just uh, today I would just want to assess them how they will speak fluently without any mistakes. So I will I will not write anything. There is no something written. I will just engage them in a topic to speak their ideas, make just 
in my opinion, just a brainstorming can be a kind of assessment. Also a game, yes. an interactive game. A game, for example, where they they write or just click on buttons, like for example, using Kahoot. Kahoot is the kind of assessment it's a game. Uh, they ca sometimes we they we can play it in class without. Uh, I mean it as a, an assessment, but I don't want to tell them that it's an assessment. So uh, yes. and they enjoy their time without that stress of knowing that it's a it's an uh, it's a quiz or a, it's a test. So uh, here yes. I'm testing them with through gaming communication. Okay. Yes, nice. Thank you very much. Let's see what are the tools for assessment. As you see here in this diagram, there are a lot. Uh, there are a lot tools uh, for assessment. Uh, the first one is the quiz or exam. Uh, then practical work as project, for example, discussion as we uh, uh, did here in this session. Uh, interview. It is a kind of a tool of assessment. Uh, for assessment assignments we you can uh, uh, make them make assignments uh, either individually or in groups for example observation y you mean you you know here observation is very important when you explain a lesson you can observe your students if they uh, understood the, the topic of the lesson or not by eye contact, by the discussion, by many means. Also examinations here, a quiz or examination quiz, it is a short exam, examination, which is maybe uh, at the end of the uh, unit, uh, a project also, tests, activities, and the student self-assessment. They can assess themselves. So those are some tools. Uh, tools of assessment, uh, observation, what can uh, be, uh, uh, what are the kinds of observation? It is either subjective or objective, maybe of these two kinds. So you should be, uh, for example, objective uh, many times, not subjective. If you uh, are always subjective, sometimes maybe uh, students will be uh, upset or disappointed, but you should be objective. Sometimes you should be sub subjective in order, uh, if, for example, uh, to develop your your student's level or competence uh, with him alone, for example, not in front of the students. Uh, tools of assessment, you mentioned the rubrics uh, when we uh, show you the diagram or the criteria, which is some words which is very important for assessment. But what are rubrics? Rubric, rubrics are used for assessing qualitative student work, such as any essays when you are writing, when they are writing essays, uh, projects, reports, or presentation. You should, as an educator, put a, a rubric before you begin assessing your students. Why? Because it is very important to let your students know what are the points that you should assess them on. Is it uh, for punctuation? Is it for grammar? Is it for spelling? For uh, word order? For connectors? For any other point that you want? Not all the points, as I said previously, in the same or at the same time. Why Robrex? For the specific expectations for an assignment or for a student performance. Here, this is an example of a rubric. Maybe it is not too clear, but it gives us a clear uh, hint about what are the points that you should put uh, in your rubric. For example, in a narrative writing rubric, there are 12 points. Here, each uh, bone, each column has uh, three on here, three points here, two points, one point and zero point. Uh, elements, what are the elements that you are going to assess your students on? For example, the elements here, uh, the narrative development, and he gives you some points here. Uh, if he follow these, all of these things, he will get the three points of the 12. Then if he gives some narrative development, he will get two uh, minimal narrative development, one point. Undeveloped, it means it is not a bland, not a good one. He he will get zero. Then organization, language, conversation, etc. And the, these are the things that are related to a rubric. 
What is the importance of rubrics? Why do we use rubrics? It is as feedback to students. It is very necessary to give us a feedback, uh, uh, to give the students feedback of their uh, uh, grade uh, or their understanding or their level of competence. Also for information data about students' improvement. Another point is, for encouraging a student to think about their own learning. It means they can uh, put their uh, hands on their weaknesses and strength in order to develop the strength, the strong point and to uh, get rid of the weak ones by, uh, for example, by studying more, by asking more, by searching uh, for more information uh, in, uh, in the Internet or from uh, the library. Also, there is another important thing, which is curriculum mapping. Uh, while not a tool for data collection, a good curriculum map can serve to focus assessment it, and also for the improvements that follow where it will be most useful, informative or effective. So you should map your curricula in order to be successful in your uh, classes. Uh, here we mentioned some uh, global apps. Miss Leila as now uh, before a few minutes that there are some apps we can use them in order to uh, put uh, our hands on our students uh, levels. If you look here, there are many apps like a quiz Kahoots, Nearbod, Forms, Badlet, Word War, Linyot, Worklet, Sway, Canvas, Curative, Classpoint. If I um, uh, press on this, look here, it will take us to a kind of a quizzes that I prepared for my, my student. Look here. This is a kind of assessing our student. It is on a grammar language. Yes, here uh, the student can play. Yes, I will uh, mute the music. Here, this is a question. This is a, a quiz by using uh, an app which is called the quizzes. It is very easy to use it uh, with your students. It can assess your students and it is very easy. Here, when uh, we, uh, we stop to admire, uh, yes. This is this one, then submit. You can follow. Yes, if it is wrong, he gives you here the red button and here uh, you can make an answer explanation. Then you can uh, proceed. Then he can gives you the points. What is the infinitive verb? For example, here because it is about infinitive and gerund. Yes, if it is correct, you see. If it is correct, he will give you a prize, etc. Then you can com uh, complete it. You should avoid cheating. If it is yes uh, correct, he will give you some points and correct ones here, answer uh, etc. I will not proceed for the sake of time. If you return uh, to uh, this, uh, another one or another app is Kahoot. Also, it is another uh, nice one. You see here, you can put uh, some questions in uh, and they can play it because gamification is very important in order to assess our students. You can play it uh, also in a nice way with your students. It is another app here, which is called Nearbot. We I use them uh, with my student and many times they um, uh, express their gladness and happiness with this. For example, uh, in order to uh, teach them the word bowl this one yes earthquake yes you mean matching it is matching well done got it agreed then you can move to another kind which is bad lead you can also uh, mm -hmm. or the word wall it is a, another app you me you uh, look here you can create many games using this one it is about models for example for my 12th grade i prepared this look here it, in a nice way in an engaging way in a motivating in a funny atmosphere look yes yes if it is right he will but uh, tick if it is not he will but x he promises she uh, well, for example, 
Yes, etc. So you can proceed by it, but for the sake of time, I will move to the other one. Yes, so those are some kinds of tools. Uh, as you see here also, there is linear, Twiglet Sway, etc. Uh, quizzes, what is the benefit of this uh, tool? It, it is helpful to set up self-graded tests in quizzes, which help us save time on assessment. It, uh, yani, uh, you can engage your students in a funny way, in an enjoyable way. They like it and they can repeat it many times in order to have a full mark and they will compete with uh, each other. Uh, another kind uh, tool of uh, or another tool of assessment is the questionnaire, as you mentioned, uh, and it has a lot of characteristics. Uh, for example, it is an economical way of collecting information for us as educators. Also, it permits a national wide or international education. It covers a large group at the same time. You can, for example, make a questionnaire for uh, many people, uh, 100, 200, uh, many uh, ones. Uh, another tool is the focus group. It is a very well known uh, kind of assessment. It includes a small number of students or participants who discuss a given topic. Here, like this picture, you can see here. This, this is the teacher and these are the members of the focus group. Uh, also, uh, it is they are used to identify and explore how people think and behave. You can both uh, your hand on these uh, points. Uh, yeah. and the portfolio uh, is another kind of tool of assessment. It is very well known and uh, you can put a rubric, as we said, they can provide a window into the process of a student learner in order to uh, put uh, the suitable uh, plan for their uh, assessment, whether across semester long project or a four year ten tenure at the university. Uh, I am equipped because uh, uh, for the sake of time, structured interviews also is another kind of uh, assessment. Surveys also is uh, uh, or giving us about the student perceptions and experiences. It is very important. Uh, 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 but what are the importance of these tools? All of this, uh, they help instructors evaluate. So for evaluation, for measuring their process uh, towards specific outcomes, please mute yourselves. Please, please, please mute yourselves. Also helps uh, participants uh, to measure their, or they help participants measure their progress towards. They provide an opportunity for valuable feedback. Malish, I will mute all because there is mess. Yes, sorry, we are about to finish. Yes. What are the tips here? The tips for multi, uh, yes, multi level classes. There are some kinds of tips. For example, the first step is to face reality. Take time to ask. Uh, meet what your students expect and need from your class. It means to ask them for uh, or about their preferences and needs to mix it up, to create a small group activities in order to engage them more. Also to focus on communication. Communication and interaction is very important and many others. Uh, but what are the characteristics? characteristics of good assessment. They are many ones. The first one is engaging students actively with goals, criteria and standards. Also encourage deep learning and use time and effort uh, well. Help learners to self correct by deliver delivering high quality feedback. Uh, try to close any gap between the current and desired performance. It is very important in order <laughs> to fulfill your objectives. <laughs> yes. 
then try to close any gap between the current. Yes, we said it. Encourage peer and teacher student interaction and dialogue. It is very important to uh, make interaction between you and your students in order to uh, achieve your goals. Also to facilitate the process of reflection. Reflection is very necessary for you as an educator and for your student to reflect on your uh, understanding, in your uh, 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 development. For example, you, you will say uh, if I had the chance to deliver this uh, lesson or to deliver this lecture, what to, or how would it be? Uh, what would I change? For example, if I had the chance to change, what would I change etc consider learners interests and needs is very important for example there are many tough topics inside our curricula uh, why uh, don't you ask your student what do you prefer what do you uh, like to write about for example some uh, writing essays are very uh, complicated for our students so we can ask them about uh, their interests also engage learners in making decisions uh, you need to engage engage them uh, or to engage them in making decisions is very important. Uh, also uh, to urge and encourage our students positive motivational be uh, beliefs and self-confidence because if you uh, build their students, uh, if you build your students confidence, uh, they will be engaged more and more and they will uh, or their understanding will be better and better. Also to help shape students learning by providing them with the sufficient information. Uh, finally, we come to some recommendations. We should follow them as educators. We should keep our class real world relevant. Uh, we should make questions clear and instructions. You know here we concentrate on the clear instructions in order to make them follow uh, them uh, easily. Uh, to give a rubric to let the students know what expected of them. Them, uh, to create your final test after not before teaching the lesson, not to give them uh, a, a test before you teach them the topic or the objectives of your lesson. Now we come to your questions. If you have any question, you can raise it. And thank you for being with us this night. Thank you. I hope that you get benefit and we can exchange ideas now. You can raise your hands. Yes. Is there any question? I will send you the phone link. Thank you for being with us, for joining us. This is not on. Sorry. Thank you, Ms. Hanan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Khaled. Thank you, Ms. Zubaida. Thank you, Riam. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mr. Muhammad. Muna. Thank you. Wait us. Re yes, uh, of course, we have a lot of nice sessions, inshallah. Wait us. Thank you. Thank you, Riam. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. Thank you, Fathiya. Thank you. Yes, if there is any question, please. Yes, raise your hand. Thank you, Miss Samira. Thank you very much. Thank you, Miss Halima. Thank you, Nawal. Thank you. Yes, I want to announce something important. Miss uh, Layla, are you with us? Miss Layla? Yes, I'm yes. here with you. I'm all yes, uh, there I is a surprise. Text. Yes, before, yes, I just want to, because you were asking for any questions and reflection. Can yes. I uh, add my uh, Yes, of I, course, of course. Yeah. Is my voice very audible to everybody? Yes, yes, uh, yes. Um, I just reflected on one slide that you have uh, said that uh, 
it is uh, okay that we use in the apps for um, uh, assessments uh, is uh, economical yes indeed uh, yes of know, course uh, yes you know that our learners now they are using the, the they are technology holders now they are they there are the tablets the computers and they use the yes. smartphones and so and the internet is um, almost available in every school and in every country uh, and for us yes uh, instead of uh, as, uh, of assigning uh, a, a quiz of one hour as we use it to do is something boring, something uh, very demanding to the students. So yes. uh, when using sometimes for example, very yeah, difficult, sometimes difficult very difficult for the yes. teacher to to prepare and for the students to yes. stay. Yes, it's uh, because as you know, you know there are the high achievers that they can finish the, the test in just. Uh, okay, 15 minutes and uh, it's almost done. Yes. And he has to uh, wait till the half of the hour and he can give it, put the paper and go out, for example. As right. Yeah. You are uh, right. So, yes, so uh, an application uh, like the, uh, we say the word wall or Nirfod or uh, Kahoot, as you mentioned, or all those amazing and attractive and appealing uh, uh, apps that you have shown. Thank you, Mrs. Shoki, for that. Uh, Thank you. To share. Uh, and uh, yes, it's just we can assign them a quiz of just um, an, not uh, of half of the hour of the uh, okay, just maybe uh, 20 minutes. Uh, they play that game and have the quiz, for example, assess them on uh, uh, grammar on present simple uh, using the S, for example, in the third person in a okay, quiz game or, or the world war uh, so it's very or vocabulary why not it will be very amazing i do it myself we i usually i use the apps for vocabulary lessons uh, thank you mr shawqiya for that thank presentation you. i like it thank a lot uh, uh, i'm you. happy to be with you today thank you and there is the surprise for you miss layla thank you for being with us and this is the first certificate <laughs> of ambassadorship in the arab english teachers association we are oh, so glad okay. to say to uh, grant you miss layla Taik from morocco for your active participation and recognize outstanding contribution to Arab English Teachers Association. Thank you very much and congratulations, our ambassador. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. You surprised me of that. Uh, I'm happy. I uh, I hope I deserve it. Uh, thank you. I, I will. OK, all a pleasure that working with you. Uh, all Thank this you. time uh, doing the coordination or uh, doing the uh, moderation, sorry. So I'm happy with you and uh, I will hope that my, our collaboration will continue. It's all Inshallah. the time a joy, a joy to work with you, really, uh, Mrs. Shoki. Thank, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is our pleasure. Thank you very much. Now, if there is any other question, you can raise it, please. Yes. Mabrook, Tanya said to you, Mabrook. Thank you, Miss Iman Shahashiro. Thank you very much. Uh, Awatif, thank you. Uh, Riam says, Congratulations. Yes. Yes. Uh, Marwa thank says, you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Miss Marwa. Uh, Mercedes Bamella says, Congrats. Uh, uh, Mervat, thank you, yeah, Mervat. Mervat says, my Mrs. Shaukia is my role model. Thank you, it is my pleasure. Thank you, Habibti, thank you. Uh, Zainab says, congratulations, Miss Layla. Uh, yes, you. you send the, the feedback. You. We said it, we, we send the, the feedback. We send it, I will send it another time. I lost the internet, uh, Miss Awatif. Congrats for what, Awatif? Uh, uh, Miss Layla is granted the certificate of membership in Arab English Teachers Association, and this is the first ambassador of our association. So our Thank participants, congratulate, congrats her, or congrats her. Thank you. 